The NHS app is the new interface for patients with their healthcare services, particularly in terms of registering with your practice and accessing your GP. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to register with the app so that you can make this process quick and easy for yourself and for your patients. Let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. If this is the first time we're meeting, I'm Dr. Gandalf of EGP Learning, where I look at supporting you with technology-enhanced primary care and learning. And in this episode, I'm going to show you a walkthrough how to register using the NHS app. This is a screen-by-screen -screen walkthrough. Don't want to miss this. As always, if you want to follow our content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you get all of our content first and foremost. And we're available on all the platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and the podcasting platforms as well. And as always, guys, we're here to save you and your patients' time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Shall we begin? So for this video, I'm going to show you how it works. Let's cut to our screen that actually goes through this step by step. So you GP learners, I'm just going to show you how you can use the NHS app. I'm going to be showing you on an Android device. So this is my OnePlus 3. And there may be parts where it goes a bit stuttery because I won't be showing you my own personal identifiable information for data security and all that kind of stuff. First and foremost, make sure you download the app. And in order to do that, either go to your iTunes store or go to your Google Play store. And to do that, simply, as you can see, go to the Play store, click, search for the NHS app. So we're gonna do that for you. I've searched for it before, as you can see. And when you do so, you've got the various different apps you can download. Top should be the NHS app. If it's not, just click on the relevant one. As you can see, there are others like Ask NHS, which is not the NHS app itself. So make sure you get the correct one. Once you've done so and it's downloaded, then you just open the app itself. And this is the interface that you have when you do so. So you can check your symptoms without registering and stuff. So to do so, you click check symptoms and it gives you the option of A to Z of treatment conditions, which you can search through, as you can see here. So clicking on it and then it's got a variety of different health conditions that you can look at in terms of information. And this is information from the NHS Choices website. Alternately, you can ask if you need urgent help. So click on there and effectively you'll be able to then check if you need any medical help. So for example, where to get prescriptions, for example, and it's got an algorithm that you follow through that gives you that information. It's fairly simplistic, but it is reasonably good. However, if you want to use the main functionality, then you need to register and create an account that allows you to log into the NHS app. In order to do so, click on the big green button, and then it'll ask you if you already have an NHS account, so an NHS login. Um, if you click yes, it takes you through to this window, that is effectively to register just like you would do with an email address. And if you don't, you can click no and it'll take you to set up an NHS login as you can see here. And then simply to do that, you put your email address in, put a password and then agree to the security documentation and stuff to continue. So we're gonna join up once we've done that. When you've done so, it'll send you an email to your registered email address to log in. As you can see here, I've just covered up my email address and stuff. And then you just simply click continue. Once you've got the email, just click on the link. Do make sure to check your junk folders to make sure it's not gone there by mistake. It is a very quick process, so it should only take a matter of a minute or so. And then simply put, you put the registration information here. So I'm gonna do that right now. Once you've done that, it'll ask to send a code to your mobile phone number that you've used to register the device with. So just enter your number there. I'm just gonna do that now. The system will then ask you to check your phone number and input the code, which is a six digit number, and then click continue. Let's do that now, shall we? The next screen will ask you to prove who you are so that you can use the NHS properly. And this is obviously for data security purposes. So therefore we're gonna do that. Let's continue. In order to continue, it will ask you to provide details from your practice to prove who you are. If you've used the surgery's online details before, then it'll ask you to put those information in. If you haven't, then it's okay. So I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna try another way. And at this stage, it'll ask for a photo ID. So it'll ask to register that. So let's continue with that. So I'm gonna suggest I'm gonna use my UK driving license. And it'll ask me to take a photograph of my UK driving license in order to do this. So let's do that, shall we? So it opens up the camera app in order to let me do that. So I'm just gonna take a photo now of this and then we'll come back to the next screen. And as you can see, it's now uploading my photo. It's important to remember that you can see all four corners when you're taking the image, otherwise the system may not be able to recognize the photo properly. 
So next it's going to ask to take an image of my face for a few seconds and also me saying a few numbers just so they can verify face and the ID. Let's do that, shall we? So it gives you particular four numbers that you have to say. Make sure you turn the camera around. So this is my video so you can see the numbers have changed just because I had to redo it to make the recording more effective. Five, nine, seven. And then simply you click yes to continue and it uploads the video for you. So it then asks you for your NHS number, I'm going to click continue. Um, I don't know my NHS number like many people so I'm going to click no. And it's going to ask for my details, so put my name in, continue, put my date of birth, I'm afraid you guys aren't going to see this part, and then it asks for your postcode. Once you've inputted your postcode it asks you to confirm the information and submit it, and then it lets you know that you'll be in contact within the next couple of hours. It normally takes about this long, but it can be quicker. So GP learners, after a short while you'll be able to register with the app once you've submitted all the information. There is a possibility you may have to submit the photo or the video again, if that's the case it's dead easy to do. Make sure the images are clear and stuff. Um, but it's very quick, can take up to two hours at the most, and I've done that now. So I'm going to go log in now using my details, so go back to the app and click log in. And then this time I'll say yes I do have an NHS login, and scroll down and continue. They'll ask for your email address and password, so I'm just going to put those in now, and then we'll click continue. And when you do that, it will then send a security number to your mobile phone that you've used when you register. So I'll ask you for a code, I'm just going to put that code in. So this is the code sent to my mobile number, I'm just going to click continue. And it asks to connect to my GP surgery, so I'm going to click continue. So then it takes you to the terms and conditions of the NHS app and just have a quick look at those. Um, so you have to agree to these various different things. So it is intended to provide you information and services to help you manage medical conditions or treatments, but it's not a substitute for your GP or medical service. Information available through the NHS app comes from third parties um, as, and they are not responsible for the information from that. Information from the NHS app also gives you access to NHS services which may have their own terms and policies and that kind of stuff. And it uses a little bit of cookies and stuff and things to make sure that it works effectively. So. I'm going to click yes and yes and then continue. So this is what the app looks like when you open it on the home page. I have just covered over my information and stuff, but effectively it's a pretty simple thing. You can open the settings to use things like fingerprint recognition on your phone if you can do that and things, or other ways that you can access the app and stuff. I'm going to scroll down to the functions part. So as you can see here, this is what the app allows you to do. So it allows you to check your symptoms, book and manage appointments, order repeat prescriptions, view medical record, or manage organ donation decisions and things. So if you just check your symptoms, it's exactly the same window that you get when you open the app and things. And if you need to go back, you just click on the NHS logo. It does allow you to book and manage appointments if I click on that. So once you click on this, it lets you see your upcoming appointments as well as your past appointments. So as you guys can actually now see that you can actually tell I had an appointment back in 2018. If you need to book a new appointment just click on the button and then it asks you to book a particular appointment. So from here it lets you look at the different types of appointments you can book. So my practice has Castle System 1 pre-bookable appointments, those are the only types I can book and that's the ones that they've elected. It's at the Castle Health Practice, you can select which practice member you want to see, one that's available and you can filter in terms of for example tomorrow and then you can book an appointment from there. So if I was to select Type of appointment, system one bookable, none for tomorrow, so I need to make it a bit wider if we go for the next four weeks. So there's various different appointments at different times that I could book. So for example, I was going to book for Friday, so this is Friday next week, and it'll tell me who that would be with and the reason for the appointment. I can put that information there and confirm and book. I'm not going to do that now because I don't need to see my GP, thankfully. Other things you can do is look at prescriptions. Now, I don't have any repeat prescriptions that I use, but if you did, this is where they'll be listed on your app, and then you can order a repeat prescription from here if need be. You can also have a look at your medical record. I'm not going to do that because I don't really want to show you guys my medical record, but pretty easy and simple to do. And you can also look at other functionality, like managing your organ donation and where your data goes and stuff. So, for example, if I click on that, you can 
changed the do donations and stuff so I've elected not to donate my organs and things um, and I can update that if I want to at that point um, you can inform your friends and family, you can withdraw decisions you can register to be a blood donor if need be various different things that this app allows you to do so effectively this app is really effective in interfacing with your healthcare system and how you want to manage things Additionally, from the home screen, you can access various other settings. So in the top right hand corner, there's a question mark here, which effectively allows you to check the information about the app itself. And next to it, you've got the little person sign, um, which effectively allows you to change your account settings. So things like your password, how you access the app and that kind of thing. Um, I'm not going to click on that because, again, it shows quite a lot of personal identifiable information. I think that is one thing to remember when using the NHS app. It is your sensitive health data, so it's important that you access this appropriately and make sure it's on your own personal device, not something that you can access by other people. It does require you to obviously use your passwords and probably is worth linking it with things like your fingerprints and that kind of stuff to make it more effective and safe in terms of your own use. However, as you can see, the app does have quite a lot of significant functionality that means it's very easy and simple to use and highly would recommend doing so in terms of registering with a new practice or engaging with your current practice, mainly to make the process a lot easier. One thing to remember, at this point, all practices are required to keep 25% of their appointments available for online use. Now that doesn't mean that you know 25% of their appointments are always gonna be available because they may have already been taken. However, this does mean that you can access the practice quickly and effectively. And as we saw, I can book an appointment for next week with ease at my current practice online without having to go through the phone lines and worry about things. Also worth checking the types of things that can be dealt with in those appointments. Different practices will have different ways that they use that. So for example, an appointment may be for a nurse where there's certain things that they will be able to do. For example, like check your smears, do asthma reviews, that kind of stuff. Whereas if you had more complex things where you need to see a GP for particular things, then that's obviously worth booking the right kind of appointments. And it is upon yourself to make sure that you are booking to the right kind of slots because the practice may not be able to change things at the last second because you've booked the wrong slot and things. There is always availability issues on the day, potentially. However, I would still highly recommend many people to use the app and hopefully you'll find this really simple and easy to use. So EGP Learners, I hope you found this a really useful video and we've gone through all the various different steps in terms of how to register with the app and also the functionality that you get as a result of using the app itself. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below. More than happy to hear them. Reviews in particular are always appreciated. And you can leave those on the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn profiles, or definitely on our podcasting things if you guys have been listening into us. And as always, we're here to save you and your patients time by tech enhancing your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.